Welcome back, League fans. We got special coverage of a series that was played out earlier in the day with Delta Fox going up against United. And since these games were played earlier on in the day, we can just hop right into the picks and bans for game number one that you see on the bottom of your screen. Yeah, and this is our first time looking at these games as well, so we're mm -hmm. not 100% sure what happened. Uh, and you get to see the Nunu jungle for the side of Delta Fox. A uh, little surprising to see that one, but they have, I guess, Kennen to work with the attack speed buff. Not super great on Jin. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, a little surprising there. On the side of uh, Team United, they have a lot of physical damage threats. They have Renekton, Lucian, Tristana, Lee Sin, and then a Galio support, which yeah. they have been flexing uh, in the support position a couple times now, not just in this series. Yeah, so Galio support, we'll see how it winds up doing in the bottom lane. I don't think we've actually seen that uh, being used on broadcast as of quite yet. I don't remember if they actually played it in the series against Goldcoin, which is our first series of the entire Challenger series. Don't think they did, but like you said, very heavy physical damage composition coming out from the side of United into what Delta Fox has. And they still have that Nunu in the jungle that could potentially be an unkillable tank in the later stages of the game. But instead of speculating on it, Mark, we can do this. We can hop right into game because we already know that these games have been played earlier on today. That sounds great to me, Tom. Yeah. We're gonna have a lot more to talk about in game, I'm sure. Uh, you know, as we said, uh, Delta Fox, pri pr before the series, we they haven't won a game yet, so we'll have to see if they're able to do one, pick up their first victory in the NACS this time around. So Delta Fox on the blue side for game number one. United over on the red side here. As you mentioned already, and as you probably know, Delta Fox have not yet won a game in the NA Challenger series. However, they will be looking to be very hard-pressed to do so against a team United that hasn't dropped a match yet. Yeah, United has been the top dog pretty uh, definitively so far around in the NACS. And uh, one thing to note here is the fact that Skara is playing jungle. And uh, in their previous series, it was actually uh, Shifter who got a couple games on it. So, uh, you know, if you want to talk high level about the value of lane, uh, role swapping, I think generally you could say it's not great because mm -hmm. people should be very, very specialized in their role. And even if, you know, someone else can play that champion, you probably know more about the role overall. So it's better just not to, to, to let someone play your role at a champion at a higher level, but not the actual position. This time around for Delta Fox, they don't really have a, a real jungler or support. Both Skara and Shifter are mid lane mains. Mm -hmm. So it makes more sense to swap based off uh, champion picks and things like that because, uh, or if you're looking for different play styles, because you don't have that deep level of knowledge at both positions that you're losing out of when you swap. You're just getting different looks on different champions. So those are the kinds of things you can look out for with role swaps when uh, you're playing at this level. I think generally you would, most people would agree that you don't want to mm -hmm. role swap players uh, just for games. Oh, the last team we saw professionally do that was the old XTG team when it had Zuna and X Smithy and Benny and everybody swapped roles around sometimes. But yeah, I mean, you, you sometimes see like longer term role swaps uh you know yeah. boy boy famously swatched from top to mid he used to be a top laner way back in the day uh but usually once someone swaps they don't keep going and changing every game mm -hmm. uh for the most part everyone just swaps to a new position to stay there uh delta fox apparently using their substitutions to change in between series yeah so Although, it was also the downfall of XTG, because at that point in time in their history, that was when uh, yeah, they, they, they were decent were at the, the time, and then uh, after Worlds, they start changing everything around. Will this be the end of Delta Fox, then? As we see Void Boy getting very aggressive trade on here by GBM, who's picked up the Lucian in this game, which, I mean, we have to kind of take a step back and think about that, too. Lucian is not a GBM champion, we think, but now ooh, a trade in the bottom lane here. Shifter getting jumped on here from the Tristana pickup. First blood. Oh, man, it's going to want to be in first blood going over to the side of united not a good start on the side of delta fox uh if you look at their stats they are statistically one of the worst early game teams a lot of their lanes have deficits uh at 10 minutes in terms of csd so they, they've been struggling to get early leads despite the fact that you know online they have been talking about the kind of win lane win game mentality that they were hoping for uh this time around none of their lanes are super dominant even with a, a nunu that's not a great snowball pick it's a lot more focused on game but hold up basil maybe getting a little bit too close a flash forward and cutie pie picks up a kill but that's going to be definitely hopping for the explosive charge pops him down one trade, for one, trade one for one if you're on the side of delta fox you gotta be happy because oh. now scar is in a uh, position uh, he has to flash over the wall shifters return to the fray and looks like it might be enough to keep you netted away for now that's a very aggressive bottom lane play at the beginning stages of this game. We said, hey, we haven't seen the Galio pick up in the support role, uh, at least in the Challenger series so far, at least specifically from Zazel. But 
playing extremely aggressive, and not only that, but getting Tristana of all ED carries two kills ahead in this early game. We saw, I believe it was uh, Immortals bust this out in the NACS, the Tristana pick, and it's one of the champions that uh, it's not quite as insane as it was late game previously, but it's mid and early game is a little bit stronger mm -hmm. as a result. So it's a champion that has really, really strong all in level two, even borderline level one. If you get your E and get enough stacks on it, it becomes a nightmare to deal with. So. Uh, no surprise to see, uh, you know, they're trying to play pretty aggressive with that Galio pick. The Justice Punch being great setup. And now Delta Fox already a little bit on the back foot. The fact that the uh, Tristana got the first blood and then uh, you trade the support out for the AD carry is favorable for the team that's, you know, giving up their support because the AD carry is out of lane missing XP and uh, gold farm. Yeah, more importantly, it puts Cutie Pie on a coal compared to now the pickaxe in addition to a control ward and some extra health potions to sustain up definitely on this Tristana acquisition. So Delta Fox's bottom lane is going to be hard pressed in this one, but all across the map, Delta Fox actually coming out a little more advantageous in these matchups here. The mid lane matchup, the Gang by Mom versus or GBM versus Void Boy matchup going slightly CS in favor of Void Boy despite being traded on aggressively early. Yeah, but part of the problem was GBM had roamed down to try and cut off Scar and that very early uh, trading going on in the bot lane. And during that time, Void Boy was happy to sit mid lane, farm up enough so he could go back and get his tier. And, and now he's in a decent spot, but uh, you know, the, the Lucian's still a very strong early champion. Top side of the map, though, Tyrus on this cannon pickup into the melee matchup of the Renekton. Looking pretty solid so far. The decent CS advantage for himself. Licorice, we see him going back a little bit early here. Has a teleport available. Looks like he's going to wind up saving that one as he did shove the wave into the tower first off. And as I mentioned here, this Lucian pickup for Gang by Mom or GBM. He's saying his entire name. So now he's just GBM now, Tom. Get that right. <laughs> but <laughs> I'll yell at me for you, Mark. Don't worry. Yeah, don't, I was going to let it go. I think the name Gank by Mom is hilarious. But. I think it's great, but this is a pickup that we wouldn't really expect out of, you know, the Xerath Oriana guy. Yeah, always a guy who was better known for his uh, late game team fighting than he is for his early game aggression. Here, getting opened up on a little bit by Void Boy, but actually passed forward away from the Miasma. But he is going to go drop down to this poison, most likely. There mm. he goes, but Dandy gets the cleanup kill. The assist going in favor of the side of United. So once again, a favorable trade, despite the fact that it is a trade. Yeah, and Boy Boy getting up close and personal and aggressive there. Actually able to get a kill for himself in the mid lane. As you said, because of the assist goal, slightly in favor on the side of United and good on the side of, game, of GBM to wind up getting Dandy involved in that kill. And now we see Scar and Dandy just continuing to wave clear away. And we also have to mention the fact that Dandy's on Lee Sin. This is going to be a scary, scary jungler. Right, Dandy, one of the original great Lee Sins. I guess I shouldn't say original because this prime time was in season four. And at that right. point, there had been a, quite a few good Lee Sins, but still a, a very intimidating player once he gets ahead. And with one kill now, we're going to have to see if he can continue to influence the game. And the bottom side of the map continually going in the favor of United with those two kills picked up already for Deathly. This is a large CS advantage, about 15. Mid lane match of the Void, but continuing to get aggressive down here on the GBM as he's trying to get advantages here on this Cassiopeia pickup, which you want to think is like an early, early stage of the game can bully people around. But with support from Scar on the backside, not afraid to get up close and personal with this Lucian. Well, that's one of the things is Cassiopeia is actually one of the uh, highest DPS uh, champions throughout the entire game, not just late game, which is when people really start getting terrified of her. But mm -hmm. even early on, you've seen players like Faker just with the E spam without even needing the poison tick to increase the damage, being able to chunk people out level one. And uh, Lucian's a champion that has good burst in his trades, but if he wants to get in range to trade with uh, Cassiopeia, he has to dash in. And during that time, if Cassiopeia can land her poison, she's actually going to be able to trade damage relatively well. So, uh, you know, it's a little surprising to see United end up with this draft overall. Um, the Lucian into Cassiopeia is not seemingly as favorable as a matchup as you might be able to get into some of the other mages like in Oriana or Talia. You see bottom side of the map because of those advantages that United got early on in those trades. Be able to chunk down that tower and denying as much CS as possible as Zazel and Danny completely zone away the bottom side of the map from Delta Fox and first tower goes solo to Deathly. Uh, things looking pretty bad for Delta Fox. 2,000 gold deficit just eight minutes into the game. The red buff being stolen away from Skara, who's up on the top side of the map. Mirror jungling, staying away from this. And the question is, you know, what can Delta Fox do to get back in this game? Because their team it comp is not particularly proactive. You have a Kennen who can split push up in the top side, but the Renekton's farming relatively even. And then your only real playmaking comes from Shifter on the Bard, who can hopefully start a fight out with his ultimate. But 
already pretty far behind. Mm, yeah, I was going to say, if your playmaker is in the bottom side of the map that is this far behind, you're not going to be making plays for quite some time. 26 CS advantage results into Berserker's Grease and a BF Sword as Deathly goes back. Ascara on this new new pickup has not even really been able to get a lot of counter jungling down pat. Danny has been able to soak up some CS in the mid lane, and although we don't normally look at the CS between junglers because of the way the different camps work out, normally you expect a Nunu who's going to be counter jungling and not ganking and assisting his lanes with zero assist to be somewhat ahead of this Lee Sang pickup. It, it's tough to say because the, the Nunu pick is more about finding openings in the enemy's jungler, being able to catch him out run up, steal his camp away, and run away. Uh, and he's not much of an actual power farmer. He's, he has a hard time clearing his own jungle. So mm -hmm. uh, if you end up in a split map situation, it really doesn't benefit Nunu at all. And here we see United rotating their volley up to the top side, opening up onto Dyrus. They're playing this game at a pretty quick pace already, trying to get their second outer turret down. Yeah, going from one marksman in the bottom lane they're abusing to the second one in the top lane as Dyrus has the Bilgewater Cutlass is going for what was most like with that double door end start, the AD style of Kennen. We see now Dandy wrapping around the backside, but the rest of Delta Fox is coming up as well. Yeah, they got to be careful here on this dive. They might be overextending as Delta Fox is here to cover. Yeah, it's, uh, they already got a kill on the Dyrus, but the Absolute Zero comes out from Nunu. The Hero's entrance is going to wind up knocking everybody up, but Cutie Pie is able to get a kill on the Dandy. Make that two as he wants to get a kill on Zazel. Definitely gets locked up by the Tempered Fate. The stun is there, and they're going to give a Cutie Pie a triple kill on Jin. Huge turnaround out of Delta. Fox early on in this game. We're talking about how they can potentially get back into it, and it's an over-aggression on the side of E United, trying to dive that turret, but Delta Fox had a read on the play. They get there in time to get the trade kills back, and uh, one of the things about the Tristana pick is she often wants to jump in range to really unload all of her damage, and that's perfect for Anunu, who's going to be able to Ice Blaster when she finally gets aggressive, and uh, having that attack speed slow, able to negate what is part of Tristana's biggest strengths in her kit is her, is her Q steroid, so that, that's a Pretty interesting counter pick, uh, depending on you know how the team fights actually play out. Might stop some of the aggression that Tristana normally wants to play with. That said, if she get, does get the kill, she can also just jump out right away. Yeah. So we'll see now if the Tristana pickup will be able to compete with the four and one Jin as the Rift Herald gets acquired and immediately uses Delta Fox. Had that rotation from their bottom lane to match that of United. And now trying to push this advantage for all it's worth here. Rift Herald charges forward, gets some damage down onto this tower. Dandy saw this might available to deal some extra damage, but they are actually able to get the tower here in the top lane. Boy Boy able to keep GBM at bay in the mid lane, and Delta Fox able to respond by evening up the gold lead, evening up the tower lead. Huge advantage. Swinging back game now even, and I gotta say, if you're, if you're Cutie Pie, you gotta be pretty happy because the big problem was you're down a lot in farm. How do you get back into the game if Tristana just keeps pushing you in over and over and over? Uh, turns out, you know, four kills is a great way to get back into the game and even that gold up a little bit. Yeah, gotta say so. Still at a 20 CS disadvantage, but those extra two kills are gonna more than make up for that. So that United and Delta Fox both have their dual lanes on the top side of the map, but we'll see if anybody gets moved around as it's a bit of an uneven distribution of towers here. So if Delta Fox stays up here, it's more on defense duty. As if you have Dyrus on the cannon now with three assists to his name, because he did get that slicing maelstrom off in that fight before he wound up going down. So he's got some extra gold now over Licorice in the bottom side of the map, who is 0 0 0. And you see the uh, the power of the Nunu pick starting to come online a little bit now that they've stabilized. He can run into the jungle, ward up, and buy a lot of vision for his team to be able to focus more on uh, pushing in their lanes. Obviously, the bot lane is still getting pressured by the extremely easy pushing Tristana, who, when you combo that with the Galio, has a ton of wave clear early on. But it also allows the Kennen to kind of just pressure in that Renekton over and over. And uh, like you said, in the mid lane, Boy's doing a good job matching up with GBM. So uh, you kind of have a losing bot lane, which is now up on the top side of the map, and a pretty stable other two lanes. Now we see Licorice slicing forward. Not getting the dice down on the Dyrus. Instead, just content to clear out minions. As now the Tristana Galia wave clear coming into effect. Definitely is going to want to get tempered faded up there. The stun is going to land on two minions, and shit is going to get knocked up. It has to flash away. But I'm a cutie pie now going forward. One last shot will secure the kill onto Zazel. Whereas on the opposite side, Dragon goes over to the side of E United as Dandy gets that one, but Scar and Dyrus are trying to start a fight. It's a 2v3 situation, and Dandy gets a kill. A little risky going for that Dragon while Boy Boy was back in base. Seemed like Delta Fox wanted to sneak that left one away. E United responds and gets a kill, but like you set up on the top side, Zazel getting too far forward. The Galio trying to get that CC down and puts him in turret range. Uh, Cutie Pie is able to trade some damage back and then able to finish him off. And there was a little bit of lack of synergy there. Uh, you know, Zazel going oh. in, as we see. Hold on, Dandy! Dandy gets taken down with a slice of a build order cutlass sticking around a little too long, and Dyrus finds him. Mistakes coming in all over the place for E United. A little sloppy on their end. 
as I was saying, just in that top lane play, while Deathly's uh, in stasis from the Bard, Zazel's going in, and then a little slow on the side of Deathly actually knocking I'm a Cutie Pie away. He tried to use his ultimate to protect his support, but just too slow on the play, and now Delta Fox looking like they want to hop the wall here. Now, Boy Boy and Scar jump over. They find themselves. Zazel is able to justice punch himself the heck out of there. Ice Blast was just a little parting shot. It's now Deathly. Might be cut off on the Tristana. The Miasma lands. He does duck away from the Deadly Flourish, but Scar's Ice Blast holds true. Another kill for Delta Fox. Decent roam by them. They have a long lane in the top side, so even though Deathly and Zazel are pushing it relentlessly, it does open up some angles for roams. And Boy Boy stacking a lot of CS in the mid lane to uh, roam up there off the blue buff handoff from Scara. So you see him giving up some mid lane CS, but you know, given the fact that he had been farming well prior to this, not too much of a trade off to make. So Delta Fox now find themselves at a gold lead. Eight kills to five. They haven't necessarily been able to answer in the objectives category and really push down on anything, but they are just kind of clearing out their waves. You see Dyrus on this bottom side has that red buff for himself, bullying around Licorice a little bit. The CS is relatively even, but if you're on the side of United, you are still making very proactive plays. You see them moving down on the bottom side of the map, trying to establish some vision to try to make sure that they can rotate down on the Dyrus if Licorice is going to be continuing to push forward. but. The duo lane from EU United, when they went to the finals against Gold Coin United, that was a little bit of a weak point for them. It kind of seems to be showing through a little bit here. A combined two and five now after starting the game two and zero. Definitely a bit of a, a weak point on their side. The thing worth noting too is the fact that United's team comp could run into a bit of a problem given that they will be all physical damage, like we were saying before. Mm -hmm. uh, Nunu is a champion who is very, very, very happy to stack um, uh, armor, excuse me. And you, you see even Cutie Pie on the Jin getting Merc Treads, or Ooh. Ninja Tabby, excuse me. Definitely going to get hit up there by a Bard Q as the tunnel through the wall comes in. Has to just keep himself alive and go back about half HP. So those advantages that Tristana had. Not so much there anymore. Cole's been popped by Cutie Pie. He already has an Infinity Edge, and Tristana going for the pieces of her finished deal item and pieces of Infinity Edge. Now Dandy trying to make a play happen on Ascara. Kick him back. There's a stun on the GBM. A fully channeled Absolute Zero won't do all too much, though, as the Hero's Entrance able to save him. You see GBM going for that uh, Hex Drinker early on to negate some of the damage coming in from the Cassiopeia because he was struggling to really bully the matchup. And, you know, that does make him a little bit safer against physic, uh, magic damage. So Skara's ultimate not doing Ooh. much right now. Caught out. Flash is inside the Tempered Fate. There's no follow-up cue there from Bard, though, as I have been used already. Has to pop the cleanse, the culling after, but Cutie Pie is unstoppable. Cutie Pie gets the cleanup kill. And now, with the Lucian down, not too much wave clear available in the mid lane. Looks like Delta Fox is going to try and seize this one up. Delta Fox, very strong early game. The gold beat is not decidedly in their favor, but that win lane, win game style may be shining through a little bit despite losing the first tower of the game. So maybe not win lane entirely across Win the lane hard and then turn around <laughs> on enemy mistake and win game, hopefully. <laughs> well, the same exact time that United has been able to utilize definitely on the top side of the map and take down the outer tower over there, which cements them a couple hundred gold in the lead at this point in time. So while Delta Fox is definitely making flashy plays happen, we had a kind of temper ourselves a little bit because early game is their strong point. The 20 minute mark is where they fall off. And we even hesitate to say strong point because like I said, they uh, had the largest deficit 15 minutes in the entire league and by a pretty substantial margin. Last time I checked, the fifth place team was negative 500 and then Delta Fox was negative 2,500. So it's a bit of a difference. A little, a little bit of a difference there, but here this game hanging on well, bragging United down to their level already 15 uh, kills in this game, trying to keep this a very fast-paced and bloody game, uh, should play more to their style than a controlled macro game. I was say, the one thing they have to do is they have to make sure they play around Cutie Pie. As we see, GVM getting stunned up and Shifter and him just kind of trading hellos as they know that there's wards in that area. Cutie Pie comes in with a deadly flourish, which will be ducked out. But a large majority of that gold advantage that Delta Fox does have is on Ama Cutie Pie, considering he has six of the team's nine kills right now. United looking to be attacking that point as they collapse down towards the mid lane here. Next Dragon will be available in about 50 seconds. However, Delta Fox trying to get that mid lane priority we were talking about in the match uh, match number one of the day, which is very pivotal to see who was able to control those Dragons and control the objectives on the map. I got to say, I'm a little surprised at GBM's build here. Why are you not going Blade of the Rune King? It's one of the things that people always build on the Lucian to give him strong 1v1 potential, going for the Death's Dance first, which is a little surprising. It's been a more scrappy oriented build, but as you mentioned, maybe not so much of the damage here. Scar and Shifter are going to be forcing back GBM. I'm a cutie by continues to push up in that area. Dragon now ticking down to about 15 seconds on spawn. They see definitely kind of 
skirting towards that area. Delta Fox is going to be moving down to try to establish some vision control in this area of the map. Got to be careful that United looks like they might be able to kind of come around and collapse on this one. They're looking to try to get an engage in. They have Lee Sin and Galio in the area. Renekton has joined the fray as well. He's 0 0 and 1. Pretty strong right now. Yeah, but. United is not in a great position. The Tristana off on the flank is not exactly where she wants to be. She wants to be grouped up with the rest of the team trying to fight front to back. So I'm a cutie pie. Face checks there. Actually gets chunked out pretty Ooh. low and ulted over the wall. Yeah, we actually see the uh, buster shot being used. The cutie pie goes back over the wall. Nice locks up a lot of the damage on the backside. They kind of isolated Zazel. That's another kill for cutie pie. He's dominating right now. Over the backside, he gets a deadly flourish onto Dandy. The kick comes out, but it's cutie pie charging forward. He will wind up going down, but Dyrus is here to clean up a kill on the Dandy. Backside of the fight makes it two. Is He's able to get a double kill. It definitely gets another one for himself. Now Delta Fox, they have three members. United only have two. Nobody's going to get in the Infernal Drake, though. No one's getting the Infernal Drake. Multiple members low on all teams. It looks like E United doesn't want to necessarily give this one up quite yet. Not recalling while Delta Fox backing off a little bit. Very, very scrappy fight. And like we were saying, it's, it's tough for the Tristana to really get involved in that fight. Had to jump over the wall. Then uh, Dandy was flanking around in the meantime as well. So they just never found a, a one target that they could focus down. Scar did a good job zoning away in the river, and it made the fight happen on multiple fronts. It doesn't really favor either team, because obviously Delta Fox as well is happy to fight front to back. Just a very scrappy fight overall. Let me see Voiboy. Boy maybe trying to solo out that Infernal Drake, but he is going to be spotted up at some wards that United had on the side beforehand, on the bottom side. So he will not be able to do that. Has to wind up going back away. And this, uh, Hectic pace of the game is not what we would expect out of e United. something we might be expecting out of Delta Fox, but e United are kind of trying to play Delta Fox's game, and although the gold counts are relatively even, they're not getting the same advantages that you would expect the first place challenger team to normally have. And here we see Delta Fox, like we said, after that reset, getting the red buff on the Cutie Pie, grouped up back around the Dragon. They have decent vision control here, so you and I are going to have to face check with their tanks. Here comes the teleport flank right into the middle of the team, though. A slice and a dice, and they're trying to get on to Ama Cutie Pie. The hero's entrance is used, but by that time, Delta Fox is kind of disengaged. Scar takes the barred portal through the wall. He's able to stay alive. A deadly flourish opens up into a curtain call. They land one shot on Licorice, two shots on Zazel. Now they're trying to lock up onto the support Galio. They blow up Dandy in transit, though. They're trying to go in and get a trade kill on Scar. They will get that as well as one on the Boy Boy. Now Delta Fox kind of had to scatter. Definitely wants it going forward, but a double kill picked up by Cutie Pie is all of a sudden GBM dies on the backside. A triple kill for Cutie Pie, and he's trying to pop off. Cutie Pie, 21 minutes into the game, 10, 2, and 3. Hell yeah. Someone needs to get this man under control. Jin going big. The red buff looks like it's what ticked down on the GBM, and now Delta Fox might not be done. No, he didn't have the red buff. No, it, it was the red buff, but it is also the Death's Dance being a relatively I don't want to say bad item choice, but a pretty bad item choice because he was in a 1v1 versus Cutie Pie. He could have taken that duel potentially with the Blade of the Rune King, unable to do so, and then tries to retreat and run away from the duel. But you've already taken so much damage from the Fed, I'm a Cutie Pie, that the Death Dance delayed damage comes and ticks back in with the red buff, killing him from about 200 health. So big misplay, big itemization problem potentially on the side of GBM. And off the back of that fight, Delta Fox grabbed an Infernal Dragon, which is really going to help the scaling of this team comp. Yeah, you get an Infernal Drake for yourselves as Delta Fox. You're up five kills. You're still down a tower. And the gold count, you have 200, 300 maybe in your favor. So you have this momentum. You have this huge fed 80 carry on your side. You need to be able to transition this into some sorts of objectives because that's where Delta Fox is losing out on these gold advantages, where they're losing out in these games. Yeah, this is, uh, you know, not unknown territory for this team. We've seen them have gold leads at 20, 25 minutes into the game with some of their... Uh They've, they've had decent early games, but the problem has always been closing the game out. They always seem to just lose one of these scrappy team fights, and then once things uh, break a little bit their way, it completely falls apart as the enemy team has better objective control. This time around with the new new pick, maybe that's what they really need to shore up some of their weaknesses and just make it that much easier. Because with a Casio, a Kennen if he's grouped up, and a Jin, you have decent damage to force down a Baron, as well as the fact that you have that Infernal Dragon. So Delta Fox now. Can they use this pressure? Can they use this advantage that they gain from themselves to push down into more sides of the map? More importantly, we're talking about Cutie Pie popping off. Dyrus is also 3, 1, and 6 now. And this is a Kennen matchup into the Renekton. Kennen already has his own Blade of the Room King. Renekton already is at a disadvantage in some of these ranged matchups. We can see Dyrus utilizing an advantage now. Utilizes the Blade of the Room King. Just Scar diving through over. onto Licorice. He even has Scar coming in the backside here. Absolute zero game channel that draws the aggro. Even Shifters here. And they're actually... 
expected the kill over the shifter, and this could be a bottom lane tower now, too. Yeah, you see what happens with not much MR on the side Dyrus? of uh, the Licorice there. Dyrus? Dyrus? Oh, okay. He's, he's, fine. he's gonna just tank that turret up and be fine, and a nice rotation down onto the bot side by Delta Fox. Move down to their pressure lane and, and uh, dive the Renekton under the turret. It seemed like, you know, Dyrus was starting that one off from a pretty... Uh, early state because Scar was not really in range yet, but he does have a lot of health available as the cannon. Now they're not done Ooh, diving. Ooh, denies the jump through from Deathly, and there's going to be a Miasma. There's going to be everything going down. Boy Boy gets on the board with his second kill. Yeah, but it's not completely unanswered. Up on the top side, GVM has gone into full split push mode, working down the top inner turret, answering the mid outer turret that was taken, while Kennen down the bot side taking the bot inner turret. So three turrets, three different lanes, all dropping in about 10 seconds. And a 3,000 gold lead now for Delta Fox, too. So these seven kills have now compounded into a one tower advantage. So while they may be cleaning out on the opposite side of the map due to the Lucian split push, they're still pressing these advantages they've gained and actually taking objectives with it, which are now manifesting into keeping that gold lead and ex extending it. And that's the thing is, is in the mid game was where they, like we said, we lost their gold leads. Now actually able to keep making plays. Uh, a big part of it is the pressure in two lanes. And, and you see Skara and Shifter kind of working around both those getting dives off. They have some pretty easy go buttons with the Bard ultimate as well as the Jin, who's extremely fed, being able to just kind of drop his ultimate to set that play up. Mm, the question is though, you know, we're always talking about the major objectives. Can they get a Baron? Can they get an Elder Dragon? Can they break an inhibitor? Well, that's the questions we posed to CLG Academy in the first uh, match of this day. And they struggled. They did struggle. So now Delta Fox, they're going to have to try to one-up that. And CLG Academy had basically the same kind of lead. So we're in a very similar situation, despite it being different kinds of compositions. And the other kind of question I have now for Delta Fox in and of themselves is pretty much like, are they going to be able to play around these power points? Are they going to be able to utilize the fact that I'm a Cutie Pies Jin is super, super far ahead, and he has a very strong front line with the Nunu pickup? Are they going to be able to utilize that go button from the Bard that now that they're ahead, they're going to be able to potentially use extremely well? We mentioned that their lack of engage with this comp or the kind of lack of a go button might be detrimental, but now they can utilize that since they are ahead, but do they know how? Well, I mean, a, a nice part of the fact of being ahead with this team comp is hopefully you don't need to press a go button and you can make them kind of run into you now. Uh, the new new pick, not only is he stacking armor correctly, Skara, but he is a little bit of an annoyance for a short range Lucian to get involved in team fights because he has to run into that slow zone that will be coming out and the the, the uh, Tristana might be able to outrange it a little bit, but you're stuck hitting this Nunu who's just going to keep building armor. And the Lee Sin will have a tough time getting through that as well as the Renekton. So Ooh. they have really strong zone control with the Nunu Cassio combination. You see Chain CC Galore going down onto Licorice's Renekton, but he's still pretty beefy, so he's not taking all too much damage for that one. Has stopped off to get a random one's omen for himself to get a little bit beefier against this very, very fed Jin and Kennen, as he has not yet finished his own uh, upgrade of the Titanic or Ravenous Hydra, just sitting on that Tiamat still. Delta Fox, though, since they have been able to take a couple of those more objectives on the map, are continuing to split push with Dyrus on the bottom side on this Kennen pickup, has his teleport available, as does Licorice. They will be just kind of pushing down to match that, but now it looks like they're going to definitely again in the middle of a jump. The Bard ultimate into the Miasma. Boy Boy seals the deal on another kill, and definitely he was two and zero three minutes into this game. Now he's three five and three. A great play out of Shifter, despite the fact that you see way more kills on Cutie Pie. You might be saying Shifter might be player of the game so far, enabling a lot of these plays to happen. And now with that pick off in the mid lane, they're going to try and push this one up and hopefully grab their fifth turn of the game. Dandy's Lee Sim, 5, 4, and 3. Has the most kills on his team, but we'll see if he's actually able to make the most of this one. Is looked like uh, Scar was the one that got that spike secured the red buff for themselves. And now it's Delta Fox pushing up in this mid lane here. There's nobody here from E United to defend against this, and they're zoning them away back on their on top side of the map. Yeah, they're I don't know what Delta, or excuse me, E United's doing. They were focused on potentially stealing a red buff away from a Nunu while giving up complete mid control to do it. Scar just being that annoying, annoying frontliner, buying time for Cutie Pie and Dyrus to work down this mid inhibitor turret. Gargoyle Stoneplate Scar is not taking a lot of damage here. Is E United even commit the calling to that one, but they've already lost their mid lane inhibitor. Tower. Big mistake out of E United there. Once the pickoff happens onto Deathly, they should go into full defensive mode and try and limit how many uh, objectives they could lose off that one. Instead, they scrap over a red buff potentially and they lose two inner tur uh, mid lane turrets off the back of that. E United with this four AD comp with this mid lane Lucian don't exactly seem to be 
playing this one as effectively as they have been able to play some of their more standard kind of team compositions when you have GBM on something that can move around the map maybe early on. We saw him doing that on LeBlanc and Lissandra, more, you know, just more of the AP mid lane pickups and now kind of playing around some more of the, I'm going to use a term that everybody hates, chaos style that Delta Fox is utilizing and actually trying to force a Baron while Delta Fox is away, but Delta Fox able to utilize a scrying orb. Finds us not United had to back away. Let's call it what it really is, the NA... Solo queue? NA solo queue style. Solo queue style! Well, that's one of the things that challenger teams often struggle with, is converting solo queue advantages into more organized team play, and it's been a bane for Delta Fox oh, against a team Andy. like United. Almost gets face checked by Dyrus there. Doesn't quite happen. Now they're going to try and force Ooh. down this mid lane. Yeah, they're trying to collapse on the Void, but with Dyrus is on the backside. Slicing Maelstrom doesn't land on anybody. He gets a stun on the GBM. Has to burn the cleanse super, super early on. Zazel now trying Ooh. to body block for GBM. Actually gets a shield up too, but he's mentioned the Death Dance taking him down extremely low. He has nice to back stun. away. A double stun lands here. They wind up rooting up down onto Licorice as well. He charges forward only to die to Dyrus. Now Scar on the front line, taking up as much as he can. Zazel's trying to recall his GPM, and the rest of E-United are being zoned against their own top lane tier 2 tower. Cutie Pie trying to get some damage on the Deathly. He jumped in trying to deliver the Galio. See, Galio did wind up going back to base, was able to heal up, and Delta Fox maybe getting a little bit too antsy here. They're rotating back towards the mid lane. This inhibitor's open. Who taught this team rotations, Tom? They're taking the bar portal down to join up with Boy Boy, who was pushing in the mid lane. They're going to grab their first inhibitor, I think, of their entire Challenger series. They might be their first inhibitor of the entire Challenger series, and they might be trying to win their first game of the entire North American Challenger series. Now, as far as who taught them rotations, I don't know about that one, and I can't really give credit to anybody that I know about, but their play between last week and this week has definitely improved. Oh, you weren't here last week, were you? Oh, I was strangely absent. Huh, interesting. Uh, so now with that mid lane inhibitor down, this is going to make it a lot easier for them to play this objective game, like we said. Uh, a lot of teams, oh, hold on. We see Cutie Pie potentially caught out. Might oh, be a big shutdown. Catch it on the Cutie Pie shifter is here. Ooh, good stun. Locks up Zazel and the Lucian from GBM. Has to dodge up from the Temper Fate. And now Dandy's dropping extremely low. Scar with a nice blast over the shoulder. And Boy Boy's able to pick up the kill. And all of a sudden, E United cannot convert onto Ama Cutie Pie. And he's going to make them pay. They take down GBM. He's able to trade one kill on the backside here. Boy Boy gets a stun down on the Deathly. The Zanya's Hourglass gets popped to try to keep him alive. He still somehow survives. And now E United are going to be EU routed by Delta Fox. I'm a cutie pie. Shooting down onto Zazel. One last auto attack will seal the deal. He's unstoppable. Deathly trying to run away. The Cloud Drake helping him do so. But that's four dead for EUN. E United playing completely into this NA solo Q style, going for a ton of fights. And Delta Fox struggled over their NA Challenger Series game so far to get objectives with everyone alive. But if they're able to find fights beforehand, often forced by the side of E United, they're able to pick up these kills, and now they're picking up objectives off the back of them. They got a Baron for themselves. They almost take down a Nexus Tower. Is definitely and Dandy just had to defend that one. And this. This is interesting. You have the first place team has yet to drop a match in the Challenger Series Summer Split, going up against the last place team. And I mean, I don't want to say that the, you know, the last place team is outplaying them. I just want to say that EU United like, right now looks like to be struggling what Delta Fox has you know, thrown at them. They're kind of playing down to their level. I mean, I hate to use that as an excuse. Normally, as a number one team, you just kind of expect to go and smash these games. I mean, Delta Fox has not won a game yet. Every other team has beaten them, and they're struggling here EU United. Yeah, but I think you got to give some credit to Delta Fox as well. Shifter's actually playing out of his mind this mm. game. The only reason that wasn't a horrible fight for Delta Fox was Shifter's insane healing onto Amakuti. Well, now Dandy's gonna get caught out, and Dyrus having himself a heck of a game goes unstoppable. Another tempered fate lands on the Zazel, and everybody kind of piling in onto the Galio here. As he's gonna get rooted, he's gonna get grounded, he's gonna get taken down. Boy Boy finds himself a kill. Interesting knock up there by the uh, Zanya's <laughs> Galio, but either way, with that, the couple picks, they're gonna keep pushing in this bot lane. They use this inhibitor push, they might be able to end the game right here. This could be a barren power play to end the actual game. They root down on the GBM. He's stunned up, he's taken down. Cutie Pie gets his 13th kill of the game. Delta Fox out of nowhere. Take down the first place team in E United in game number one. And it's their first victory. Not only is it, uh, you know, that much of a surprise, but it's against the best team in the Challenger series. That's not what the script writers wrote down. Yeah, just double check that script. What's this about? I don't know exactly how to really uh, summarize that one. The fact that the fact of the matter is, United got first blood. They got two kills in the bottom lane, like less than five minutes in. They made things happen across the map, and then they just 
devolved into fighting uh, Delta Fox the entire game. Yeah, I think you can say that they probably came in a little overconfident in that game. The dive in the top lane uh, wasn't the worst idea necessarily because if Delta Fox isn't there heading up there to cover that play, then that goes well. They insta-kill the Ken and they get out and they keep pushing. Mm -hmm. uh, Delta Fox read that play, were able to collapse on it, and after that even game situation, it didn't feel like United recognized that, hey, we have to start respecting this team a little bit more. They kept going for these really, really over-aggressive plays, really scrappy. And then you have to look at the draft as well, not being a good draft at all on the side of EU United and something that, you know, Delta Fox punished really hard. Yeah, it makes you feel like that EU United, once they actually lost the advantage that they had, felt like they were struggling to actually get them back in the, you know, back into their favor, which is a bit of a concern if you're the first place team and you're used to having these leads. And we've seen them play the long game. We've seen them win three game series against Goldcorn United, against Tempo Storm. So, very difficult here for United if they're struggling with a team composition they're unfamiliar with. Right, and I think, I mean, on on the one hand, yeah, it, it's strange to see that, but it does mean that they can kind of go back to their comfort, what they're, mm -hmm. what they're better on, and hopefully start winning some games uh, because it's a little scary now down the first game in the best of three versus the last place team who, you know, could actually be a big impact on the course of the overall Challenger Series because if they lose this, that really opens them up to potentially get overtaken as the first seed. Yeah, and that in and of itself is very, very peculiar in and of itself. We're a bit flabbergasted here, so we're going to be headed for a break. When we come back, we'll take a look at game two.